Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright from Econ Course Companion, and today we're going to take a look at showing a loss or negative profit in the market structure of perfect competition. So let's take a look. All right, well, here you see what might at first be a little bit overwhelming, but let me show you something. It's not, okay? This is a loss in the short run for a firm in, in perfect competition, okay? Now remember, when we draw these graphs in perfect competition, we need to represent where this price level comes from, from the firm, right? And so therefore, next to all of our diagrams in perfect competition, we are going to draw the industry firm, which is a very simple diagram to draw, which is just the demand and supply curves for the industry of whatever um, market that we're operating in for this firm, which operates in perfect competition. An example of that would be like a foreign exchange market or any sort of internationally traded commodities because these firms, as you remember, are price takers. They take the price from the international, um, the international marketplace, some, some power that be. So for example, in this case, the market for, I don't know, corn, right, is going to have an equilibrium price quantity combination of P. Well, if you're selling corn, you have to take that price in perfect competition because that's how you need to behave, okay? Cool, so that's how we derive price. Now, if we were drawing this diagram over here from scratch, what would we do? Simple, recognize what we need to do. We are drawing a perfect competition graph, which means we have these axes, plus we draw, first draw our revenue curves. Demand, average revenue, marginal revenue curve, marginal revenue are all equal to one another in perfect competition. If you don't know why, go back and watch some of the earlier videos that I have posted. Okay, then draw our marginal revenue curve. Bam, there it is. Because where our marginal revenue curve intersects with the, I'm sorry, where our marginal cost curve, I said marginal revenue, where our marginal cost curve intersects with our marginal revenue curve, is where we would find the perfect quantity for this firm to maximize its profits, or, another way of saying that, the profit maximizing level of output, which is Q. Okay, this part is really important. Now, this process would be the same if we were to show abnormal profit, loss, or normal profit. But this question is telling us to show a loss. Oh, that's easy. That means that whatever the costs are of the firm, they are not going to be covered by the price of the product at the profit, quanti the profit maximizing quantity. So the way we show that is very simple. We have one curve left to draw. We extend this quantity upwards to this point, and then we draw our average cost curve. But before we draw it, we know that the lowest point of the average cost curve must be right at the marginal cost curve. This average cost curve's lowest point must be at marginal cost, not at the quantity, okay? So we draw that, boom, there we go. This is the AC curve or the ATC curve, same curve. And then what do we do? Well, then we draw the line up from the quantity and this box right here is what shows our losses. And we know this because this is not until this price level of C do we cover all of our costs, or average costs, for producing at this quantity? And therefore, this firm is going to be showing a loss, okay? So, there you go. That is how to show a loss in the short run for perfect competition. Now, here's the catch. Here's the catch. That is not going to subsist. There is... In, a mar in perfect competition, we have this notion of perfect information, and firms have no very practically, actually, have no barrier of entry into the marketplace, and they have no barrier to exit. So therefore, if a firms are making losses, chow, they are out. They're leaving the, this industry, right? Why would they consider, why would they continue to produce when they're losing money? So how would we represent that? Well, here's how we would represent that. Because in the long run, all of those losses would be gone for, of course, the firms who elect to stay in the business, right? So as firms leave, the, uh, leave this market, they sh that would have the effect of, of shifting the supply curve in the industry 
inward because it, fewer firms mean fewer supply, right? These firms, if there were uh, whatever, however many firms there were from the beginning, if people leave because they're making losses, that's going to shift the supply curve inward. And as a result of that inward shift, we are going to find a new price quantity equilibrium in the industry supply and demand diagram of Q1 and P1. Well, since firms are price takers, now they must adjust their price. They have no choice, right? They have no choice. And so the demand curve and the average revenue curve and the marginal revenue curve, because they are the same curve, is going to be forced to shift upward because it's perfectly elastic in the perfect competition market structure. So as a result of that, these firms leaving, we get a new price that firms must take, and look what happens. Well, for the firms that were able to stick around, they end up making absolutely normal profits, right? Normal profits. And normal profits happen when marginal costs and average costs meet average revenue and marginal revenue right there, okay? So this is how we show how in the long run, losses will be turned into normal profits for firms that elect or can stay in the industry. All right, my friends, if you understood that, you are well on your way to understanding um, how it is that in a perfect competition marketplace, firms who experience losses will eventually, if they can, stick in the business long enough, actually enjoy normal profits. All right, my friends, I hope you found that video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.